Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding plays. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story. entitled The Ghost and Private Perkins. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first, today your rapidly expanding United States Army needs intelligent young men with ability and ambition. Men intelligent enough to recognize the vital need for a strong armed force. Men with ability enough to be trained in a necessary job. Men with ambition enough to secure the future for themselves and their loved ones. Does this description fit you? Can you qualify? For full information on how you can fit in with the finest, check with your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station now. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, The Ghost and Private Perkins. <laughs> anyone ever tries to tell you there's no such thing as a ghost, you just refer him to me. My name's Perkins, Sergeant Al Perkins of the United States Army, stationed right now in Washington, D.C. The time I met a ghost, though, I wasn't a sergeant. I was plain private Perkins, and there were a few thousand miles, including the Atlantic Ocean, between me and the nation's capital. <laughs> D-Day was over. The long, hard fight across France was over. The boys with a stiff arm salute and the goose step were on the run, and it wouldn't be long before they threw away their guns and yelled uncle at the top of their lungs. My company was cooling its heels in a little town in Normandy that had a name I still can't pronounce. Du Bouquevre sur Pont. Yeah, or something like that. It was just a little village, kind you might see out in the Midwest. You know, I had a main street and a couple of stores and a pretty little church, and that's about all. Since most of Mr. Hitler's lads had picked up their marbles and made a beeline for their Vaterland, there wasn't much to do except keep our eyes and ears open for any smart Alex who might have stayed behind hoping to get a pot shot at one of us. You know, like the captain said. This area has been combed pretty carefully, men, but there may still be one or two Nazis in the vicinity. There have been some thefts recently, and the mayor told me this morning that one of the younger boys saw a man in uniform in the woods to the south of the bridge. A man in a gray uniform. I know, I know. Kids have a good imagination. But these kids know a German when they see one. I'm sending out a detail to search those woods again. No sense taking any chances. And remember, I want everyone fully armed at all times. Don't forget that. Fully armed. Well, when it came to details, good or bad, and mostly bad, the name of Perkins always headed the list. But I missed that particular patrol, and I was very happy, because it was a hot day, and I'd been thinking about taking myself a nice, cool swim in the river. Hey, Perk, you gonna have yourself a swim? Mm-hmm. That's what I had in mind. Now, look, it's a mile to the river. The sun's beating down on you. You're really dragging by the time you get there. Off come the clothes, and in you go, and it's cool, right? What are you building, boy? You paddle around, you make bubbles and splash like a kid in the tub. You ain't got a care in the world. So? So the time comes when you got to go home. You climb out, you dry yourself off, put on your clothes. You coming with me or not? You walk the mile back, and by the time you get back to camp, you're just as hot, if not hotter, than when you started. So why don't you sit down and we'll have a nice game of cards? Using my deck, of course. Nope, I'm still taking a swim. Coming? Will Betty Grable be there? Oh, shut up. 
Hey, don't tell me you're toting that great big M1 rifle along, too. Well, you heard what the captain said, didn't you? Well, if you drop dead from heat prostration, don't come crying home to me. I won't. Take it easy, buddy. Hey, Perkins. Yeah? Watch out for that boogeyman in the gray uniform. Well, I started out feeling a little like a kid playing hooky from school. All of a sudden, it seemed like there hadn't been a war at all. It seemed like I wasn't in France, but I was home in Michigan. And the people I passed were Michigan people, and the long gray-brown fields were Michigan fields. You know, it was one of those days you could write poetry about, if you were the poetry-writing type. Big blue hunk of sky, flowers everywhere and a nice summery breeze. Now you can imagine that I was a plenty surprised boy when I happened to look back and saw a wicked-looking bunch of black clouds doing a fast sneak job on me. By then, I was a long way from town. To try to beat it back to camp would mean getting soaked to the skin. And there wasn't a farmhouse in sight, but a little way up the river, I spotted a small, low stone building. It looked like an old mill house or something. The storm was just about to break. It looked like the only way to keep from getting wet, so I cut across the field, grabbed at the latch on the door of the mill house, and walked inside. When I got used to the darkness, I began looking around me. <laughs> There's a musty old joint. All cobwebs and dirt. Like no one had been there for years. Well, I don't mind admitting it was downright creepy. I had dusted off an old wooden box and was getting ready to sit down and sweat out the storm when suddenly it happened. Down at the far end of the room was a sort of a contraption. I guess it was the controls for whatever kind of work had been done in this place. You know, there was a lever and a couple of wheels and a long rope that went up into the shadows. I'd seen all this when I first came in and paid no attention to it. Suddenly I saw something I hadn't seen before. I saw a man or something that looked like a man. And he was standing by the long rope that went up into the darkness, and he was looking right at me. So my hand reached out for my right. Hey, hey, you! Is this your place? Well, he didn't make a move. He didn't say a word. I, I, I came in here to get out of the storm. I hope you don't mind. Now, why didn't you say something? Cat got your tongue? Well, he still didn't say a word. He just stood there. Well, it began getting on my nerves. Okay, now, let's just break it up. Stop playing games now and get over here. Now, look, this is a rifle I got in my hands. If you don't understand me, maybe this will make you understand that I'm not kidding. Now, get over here. Move fast. I said, get over here, or do I have to show you that I'm not kidding? All right, don't say you didn't ask for it. I tossed three shots in his general vicinity, not too close, but close enough to let him know I meant business. I saw splinters fly as the slugs chewed their way into the rotten old walls. A cloud of dust boiled up from the floorboards, and the long rope moved like it was alive. <laughs> lightning flash came in the one small window and through the cracks in the wall and it lit up the whole room just for an instant but in that instant I looked down at the end of the room and it was empty there was no one there Now, when I got back to camp later, you can be sure I kept my mouth shut about what I'd seen. I mean, I had enough troubles without making myself the laughing stock of the whole company. I could just imagine my buddy saying, You mean you saw a ghost? For real? Look, Buster, maybe you better go on sick call. Like right now. Or suppose I'd made a report to the captain. 
A most interesting story, Private Perkins. You forgot to add one thing, however. Was it a French ghost or a German ghost? Oh, no, no. I mean, I, I batted the thing around for two days. It just didn't make sense. None of it. And I knew if I didn't talk to someone soon about what I'd seen, I'd begin thinking maybe I did have a few loose marbles in my head. So, finally, I decided to pay a visit to the one person I knew might be able to help me. <laughs> but, of course, there is a ghost in the old mill house, my son. Oh, he has been there for many long centuries. Well, now, 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 just wait a minute, Father. Let me get this straight. That, that man I saw, he was a ghost? Emile Dubecavre. It was for him that our village was named was his generosity that built this church. But there's no such thing as a ghost. <laughs> and yet, you saw this man. As clearly as I see you sitting there. Uh, perhaps the atmosphere of the old mill house, the shadows and the dust, and outside a storm. Well, you've already said the mill house is haunted. Well, I am merely passing on to you what I've heard many, many times. It is common talk in the village that... The ghost of Emile Dubecavre haunts the old mill house. Many people have seen him. <laughs> he has not, however, deemed it important to appear for me whenever I visited that rather dismal place. Well, why does he appear at all? I, I mean, uh, how do other people see him? Why did I see him if I did see him at all? Eh, the legend is that he appears to anyone in trouble. Oh, he was a type of... French Robin Hood, a ruthless businessman, not very honest either. But the vast monies he collected were always given to the needy. One of his rivals discovered how badly Dubecavre had swindled him, and one dark night arranged for his murder. Oh, he was, he was killed in the mill house. Eh, the villagers found his body the next morning. He had been hanged. Eh, a rather disagreeable and violent end for such a wonderful scoundrel. Well, it's a very pretty story, Father. But it doesn't hold water. You said that Emil du... Uh, du Becavre. Yeah, that he appears just for people in real trouble. Well, outside of missing a good swim and getting caught in a thunderstorm, I certainly wasn't in any trouble when I saw him. Well, I, I'm merely passing on to you the facts of the legend, my boy. You must interpret them yourself, as you see fit. <laughs> well, I know I've taken up too much of your time already, Father. Thanks so much for the information. Well, I, I hope I have been of some help. You've been a big help. Thanks again. Please come and visit me soon again, Private Perkins. It's been a pleasure meeting you. Oh, I will, Father. Goodbye. I went back to camp and sat on the edge of my bunk, just staring at the wall in front of me. I was more confused now than I'd been before I heard about Emil Du... Uh, what's his name? I reasoned with myself that this was the 20th century, that I was a big boy who didn't believe in ghosts. And yet, what or who was it I'd seen in that old mill house? Hey, Dreamer, did you see the bulletin board? We'll be moving out of here tomorrow morning. Boy, well, I'd be glad to shake the dust of this town off my boots. Maybe now we'll get a chance to see Paris. Ooh la la. Hey, Dreamer, you listening to me? You heard what I said? I heard you. Well, you don't act like you did. You don't seem happy about clearing out of here. I'm happy, see? I'm smiling. I'm real happy like you. Just so long as you're happy, buddy, that's all that matters. I gotta keep my buddy happy. How you gonna keep them down the fire? Oh, I was happy about moving on. Sure, I was real happy about that. I was even happy about the idea of seeing Paris. But I knew there was one thing I had to do first. And I had to do it right then, on my last night in that little French village. I knew I had to go back to that mill house and prove to myself that there was no such thing as a ghost. Of course, that's the whole point of my story, though. Because that night, I really did meet the ghost of Emile Dubuquevre. You are listening to the proudly we hail production of The Ghost and Private Perkins. We'll return to our story in just a moment. Young man, let's talk about your future and America's future. 
They're important to each other, you know. Today, your United States Army is charged with a vital responsibility. You need only to glance at your local newspaper to realize how vital. And to meet this responsibility, the Army is rapidly expanding its forces. They have a job for you, a job that must be done by men of courage. You can get full details of how you may best serve your future and your country's future by a visit to your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station today. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of The Ghost and Private Perkins. That last evening I spent in the little French town of Du Bouquevre sur Pont was one of the longest in my life. I was impatient to get back to the mill house by the river, but I didn't want any of the guys to know what I had in mind. I didn't want any of them coming with me, especially my buddy, who was far too practical a person for this particular mission of mine. Now it says in this book that Paris is the most beautiful city in the world. I always thought Brooklyn was the most beautiful. Yeah, well, it's all how you look at it. Through Brooklyn eyes, I look at it. Has Paris got an Ebbets Field? Has it got a Gowanus Canal? And girls. Has it got girls like Brooklyn? Well, in a couple of days, we'll know. What, what time is it? That's the fifth time you asked me the time in the last hour. You got a late date or something? Oh, sure, sure. Cocktails at the Stork, dinner at Lindy's, gonna catch the floor show at the Copa. What time is it? Five after 11. Well... Have yourself a time on a town. I'm hitting the sack. Good night, Perkins. You want me to tuck you in all comfy? Maybe you would like a fractured head. The lights went out in camp. The guys settled down. Someone down the line started sawing wood, but good. The moonlight seeped in through chinks in the wall. Long silver fingers moving across the floor. I lay there mentally counting off the minutes. Then way in the distance, I heard the town clock tolling off midnight. I swung my feet off the bed and reached for my shoes. Well, it was now or never. And I knew I had to see the inside of the mill house once more. I grabbed my rifle and made my way out of camp as quietly as I could. Well, the little town was sound asleep. Here and there a light glimmered, but the streets were dark and completely empty. The wind whispered strange echoes as I walked through the square and headed towards the country. As I passed the church, I was surprised to see someone standing by the picket gate. I was even more surprised when I heard a voice say, Isn't it rather late for an evening walk, Private Perkins? Oh, oh. Father Pierre, good evening. Come in and sit down for a moment. I, I believe there is still some hot coffee on the stove. Well, thanks a lot, but I'd rather not. We're, uh, we're moving out tomorrow, and there's something I gotta do. <laughs> You are still not satisfied about the little mill house. Oh, well, how do you know? Oh, it has happened before. You're not the first. There was a young couple from America. They were bicycling through the country and heard the legend of the mill house. They spent three nights there. No ghost? Not even an ear, a moan, or a clanking chain. <laughs> As I told you, our ghost appears only to a person who is in trouble. Well, then he made a mistake when he appeared for me the other day. Uh, so it would seem. Well, I still want to make sure. Well, I, I would go with you, but uh, this is my night for guard duty. You on guard duty? Oh, one of us watches every night. There may still be some of the enemy hiding in the neighborhood. Yeah, the captain told us that a couple of the kids had spotted a man in uniform in the woods. Uh, if they are still here, we will catch them. They will not escape. Maybe I'll have some of that coffee with you when I come back. I'll be waiting here. Good luck, Private Perkins. My regards to Emile Dubequevre, if you should see him. Eh, 
there the good father had an amused look on his face as I turned and started down the road. I didn't blame him. I felt a little silly myself. I knew I wouldn't see the ghost of Emil Dubukevra. If I'd had any sense, I would have gone back to camp and gotten a good night's sleep. But some little stubborn streak inside kept me headed towards the mill house. The village clock had just struck one as I stood in front of that sagging wooden door again. The moon was still high in the sky. The old mill house was bathed in a misty glow. I hesitated for just a moment. And I lifted the latch. And I pushed open the door. Everything was just as it had been that storm-swept afternoon. Swirling dust. Now and then a little sound as a mouse scurried through the darkness. Well, you couldn't have asked for a better setting for a good ghost story. I stood there, just inside the door for several long minutes. And the moon slid behind a cloud and the mill house sank into blackness. I froze as I heard an alien sound from across the room. A strange, sliding sound. My, my heart pounded. There was a dust-dry taste in my mouth. Then uh, slowly, slowly, moonlight again appeared, lancing the blackness. I, I stared across the room, stared in the direction from which that strange sound had come, and there, in that same corner, standing by the long rope and the twisted, broken machinery, was the dim figure of a man. I suggest that you drop that rifle and lift your hands. Hey, you, 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 you're I not... I said drop that rifle! It is unfortunate that you chose to return to this place after your experience of two days ago. Well, uh... Uh, I, I don't get you. This has been a most convenient hiding place for me. I intend to keep it so. Uh, you, uh, you were here during the storm? <laughs> I could have killed you then. I thought, however, that you would leave and not return. Well, uh, where were you hiding? There's a small room behind me. The door slides open. See? Whoa. Was it, was it you I saw standing there beside the rope? Ah, what are you talking about? Do you think I would have been foolish enough to show myself? I stayed behind the door. I was able to see you through these cracks. You, you didn't come into the room at all? I have already told you that I stayed behind the door. Emil Dubukevra. What? Ah, I think you sensed someone was in the mill house. You fired your rifle in this direction. Yeah, yeah, he was trying to warn me. He, he knew I was in trouble, in danger. <laughs> you are in extreme danger right now, my friend. You see, I'm going to have to kill you. Huh? Kill? No, no, you won't get away with it. Just fire a shot in the entire village, including the United States Army. We'll be down here on the double. Hey, we'll not hear a shot. This revolver is equipped with a very adequate silence. And when I don't turn up for Reveille in the morning? <laughs> By then, all traces of tonight's incident will be gone. Especially your body. Now, kick that rifle across the floor. Now, wait a minute. Father Pierre knows I came to the mill house tonight. Kick that rifle across the floor! Yeah, well, he'll tell my commanding officer that I came here. And the company won't move out until a complete investigation is made. Nothing will be found, I assure you. Oh, yeah, yeah. The Nazis cover murder so effectively. This is not murder. This is a question of your life or mine. And at the moment, my life is the more important. In your opinion only, I'm sure. You think you have beaten us, don't you? Well, it looks that way, don't you think? Uh, the Reich will conquer. We will strike back and the Allies will be defeated. 
then we will rule the world. Uh, you boys have a pretty good opinion of yourselves, don't you? Uh, it is a waste of time to stand here and talk to you. Well, how about a cigarette for the condemned man? I have no cigarette. In the pocket of my jacket, the upper pocket. Don't reach for them. Keep your hands up. We shall both have a cigarette. Yeah, upper right pocket, huh? There should be some matches to end the... I should have known you would try a trick such as this. Well, I have a few more tricks you haven't seen yet. Like that. Yeah, and let go of that gun before I break your wrist. Yeah, that's nice. Well, now that makes things a little more even. You fight well. Very well, my friend. I fight well, too. Like... This! Ooh. Ooh. Gun. Where's the gun? You kick the gun! Where is it? Uh, you, 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 you throw a, a low punch, don't you? Your, your, your rifle will have to do. This is the end, my American friend. Emil. Emil Dubukevra. Get on your feet, fast! Don't you see him? Standing there in the corner? Yeah, by the rope. He's standing there, just behind you. That is an old trick. There's no one in this mill house but you and I. And in a matter of seconds, there will be just me. He, he's touched the rope. I can see it moving. He's pulled the rope and... Hey, hey, watch out! Hey, that machinery's starting to go! <laughs> If uh, anyone ever tries to tell you there's no such thing as a ghost, you just refer him to me. Name's Perkins. Sergeant Al Perkins of the United States Army. Okay. You have it your own way. The fight we had loosened that old machinery and it gave way. And the whole thing was just a lucky break for me. But I know what I saw. And I still say I owe my life to the ghost of a fella named Dubu Kevra, who knew I was in trouble, real trouble, and who did something about it. Here's a special message for the young men of our country. The United States Army, the senior service of our armed forces, is expanding rapidly and needs your help. By enlisting in the United States Army, you'll not only get the finest training in the world, but you'll have the special pride that goes with wearing a United States Army uniform. Why not get full details today? Visit your local United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. Enlist now. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This program featured a cast of outstanding players. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>